Scientists have relied on radio waves for searching for signals of extraterrestrial life for many years and a centre in Ireland has a telescope now that would pick that could pick up the signals if they ever do arrive. And to tell us more about this, I'm joined now by space commentator Leo Enright. Leo, you and I talked quite recently about the potential for life on Venus in the form of microbes. But what we're looking for here is life capable of making a radio show. Yes, Kira, it's life, but uh, not as we know it, as they say. It's also the greatest mystery in science. I mean, of all the mysteries in science, the greatest mystery of them all is, is there life out there other than uh, here on Earth? And if there is life out there, is there intelligent life? And uh, this array, the uh, the large, uh, the, the, the low-frequency array, the ILOFAR, uh, is a radio telescope uh, in Burr in County Offaly. How did it come to be in Burr in County Offaly? Well, now, Kira, not many people know this, but for a, almost 100 years, um, uh, you know, 150 years ago, back in the Victorian era, Burr was mission control for humanity's exploration of the cosmos. Not Houston. It was when people talked about space exploration. Burr, we have a problem. Talk, that, that's what we would have been saying back exactly, then. Exactly, because there was the huge Leviathan, the huge telescope at Burr, uh, which was built by Lord Ross, uh, one of the Parsons family, the, the extraordinarily talented Parsons. They built this telescope back in the 1800s, which was able to see further and more than any telescope on Earth at the time, and continued to be the largest telescope on Earth, as I say, for most of the Victorian era. And has it been souped up lately? Is that it? Well, the telescope is still there, but that's a visual telescope, and it has been restored. Thank heavens, it's uh, in all its glory, well worth seeing. It really is most impressive. But this is a radio telescope. It's looking at a completely different wavelength. It's listening out for radio waves, and it really does look as if somebody put out their washing. Um, It's a load of clotheslines stretching out across a field in Offaly. It looks... Uh, very mundane, but it's actually able to pick up low frequency emissions from other galaxies. And, 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 and Leo, just how likely, I mean, we talked, as I say, about microbes and we can kind of get on board with organic chemistry being out there in, in, in you know, the intergalactic space. Um, but how likely is there to be like a, an alien Shane Coleman sending out radio signals somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in the universe? <laughs> Heaven forbid, but if could there be ask, two? If you if you were to ask me twenty five years ago, I would have had to say to you, I really don't know one way or the other. But since then, we have made the most amazing progress. Twenty five years ago, we did not know of any other star out there apart from our sun with planets circling around it. Now we know of thousands of these things. It's a huge development. We now know of all these stars with all these planets. And thousands, does that mean the likelihood is higher? There's a a dapper, a dapper dressed alien somewhere out there. Exactly. The the likelihood of there being aliens out there has increased enormously in our lifetimes. It's a mystery that the ancient Greeks wondered about. Uh, it's a mystery that, uh, that a man called Giordano Bruno yeah, was no, indeed. burned at the stake for suggesting uh, there and, might be other planets and perhaps there. Now we know there are. Perhaps Burr Castle may be what gives us the answer. Look, thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. That is space commentator there, Leo Enright.